Let's look at number 18. How is the argument vulnerable to criticism? What's wrong with the argument? Why does the support not really prove the conclusion well, in other words? So according to records, physical therapy patients that received less than six weeks of treatment, 31% of them showed major improvement and it didn't matter regardless of whether they were treated by a general practitioner or by a specialist. They all had generally 31% major improvement rate. And then also in addition to that, we studied patients who received physical therapy for longer than six weeks. And in that case, again, it didn't matter whether they, they were treated by a general practitioner or by a specialist, they had about 50% major improvement rate. Therefore, in conclusion, the choice between seeing a specialist versus a general practitioner for necessary physical therapy is not really going to affect the chances that you're going to have major improvement. Now, the crux of the support for this conclusion is not so much the difference between the 31% and the 50%. It's more the fact that the 31 held constant for people who saw a general practitioner or a specialist. It was 31% regardless. And of the people who did longer than six weeks, again, it was 50% regardless of whether they saw a general practitioner or a specialist. So the argument goes on to say, to make the conclusion that therefore it doesn't matter whether you see a general practitioner or a specialist, it's not going to affect your chances of major improvement because they seem to have the same chances either way. Why is this a bad argument, right? At face value, this seems like a pretty decent argument. Again, we studied people in two different groups and it seemed like it didn't make a difference whether they saw a general practitioner or a specialist, they had the same major success rate. So therefore, doesn't it seem like it really doesn't matter? You could just choose either one? And the answer is no. If we think about this very carefully, just because we studied people who did one thing versus another thing and these people had a good success rate or a, or a, you know, whatever, some specific success rate from doing that thing that they did and some other people had a, the same success rate from doing what they did, it doesn't mean that they could have just switched and things would have been the same, right? It doesn't mean that you could just randomly choose one and expect that result no matter what because maybe there were some specific people that did this and some other specific people that did the other thing. I'll give you another example because I'm speaking in the abstract, so maybe it'll clarify if I give you another example. Let's say we looked at people who took antibiotics for being sick and it turns out that 95% of them got better. But then let's say we look at people who took Tylenol because they were sick and 95% of those people got better. So can we then make the conclusion that, oh, well, it doesn't matter then if you're sick, you know, it doesn't matter. You could take Tylenol, you could take antibiotics. It's not going to make a difference because it's the same success rate either way. The answer is no, because maybe it was different people that was prescribed, were prescribed the antibiotics and different people that were prescribed the Tylenol, right? Maybe that's why they had such a good success rate is because the doctors know what they're doing. They know who to prescribe antibiotics to and they know who to prescribe Tylenol to. But maybe had the antibiotics people instead taken Tylenol, maybe then only 0% of them would have gotten better and vice versa right? So just because some people had a success rate with something and some other people had the same success rate with something else doesn't mean you could have switched it because maybe there was a reason that these people got the antibiotics and there was a reason that these people got the Tylenol. Maybe they were sick with different things. So too here in this paragraph, just because you have the same, just because the people who saw a general practitioner had the same success rate as the people who saw a specialist doesn't mean that you could have switched it and expected the same result because maybe the people who saw the specialist, that's because they were the people who should have been seeing the specialist. And maybe the people who saw the general practitioner, maybe the general practitioner gave them something that was uniquely beneficial to them. So maybe there was a reason why these people had to go to the general practitioner and there was a good reason for these people to go to the specialist. Maybe had you switched them around, maybe their success rate would have been different and therefore maybe it does matter which one you go to. So that's kind of the flaw. That's what we want to look for. Let's look for something like that in the answer choices. Again, the conclusion, just to simplify things, sum everything up, the conclusion is saying it doesn't matter whether you see a specialist or a general practitioner. It's not going to affect, it's not going to affect your chances of major improvement. We're just looking for an answer that says, no, how do you know that? Maybe it does affect your chances of major improvement. Maybe there are specific things that one of those two people can offer that the other one doesn't. And therefore, maybe it does matter which of those two things you choose. So let's look for something that says that in the answers. A tells us that maybe the argument's flawed because it presumes that effectiveness of practitioners in bringing about major improvement can't differ at all if their effectiveness in bringing about any improvement doesn't differ at all. So in other words, A is saying that this argument is flawed because it conflates major improvement and any improvement. It's saying, it's, A is sort of suggesting that we're, we're getting evidence about whether they provide any improvement and we're using that to make a conclusion about whether it provides major improvement. 
Now, if we look back at the paragraph, we see that that's not the case because the entire paragraph is talking about major improvement, right? The study in the first sentence showed 31% of major improvement. The study in the second sentence showed 50% showing major improvement. And the conclusion says, therefore, seeing a specialist versus a general practitioner won't affect your chances of major improvement. The entire argument was about major improvement. We never did this illicit variable shift from improvement to major improvement or vice versa. Therefore, A is barking up the wrong tree. B says that the argument is problematic because it doesn't give us any information about the types of injuries that require short-term versus long-term treatment. Remember, we said when we read the paragraph, though, the difference between the 31% and the 50%, that was not what we were focusing on, right? The 31%, that was when we studied people who got short-term treatment, less than six weeks. And then the 50%, that was when we studied people who got longer term treatment, longer than six weeks, right? It doesn't matter which types of injuries are going in category one versus the types of injuries that go in category two. They were both just independent pieces of support. We weren't trying to contrast the two. We were just trying to show in both cases, in the 31% case, in the short term case, it was 31% for general practitioner and it was also 31% for specialist, right? That was a piece of evidence on its own. And then Additionally, independent of that piece of evidence, here's a second piece of evidence that even when we studied longer term, it was the same thing. It was, I mean, it wasn't the same rate, but it was, it was 50%. It was a different rate of success for major improvement. But the point is that it was the same in that it held steady for general practitioner versus specialist, right? So the point wasn't differentiating between the short term and the long term. The point was that in both the short term and the long term, it didn't make a difference whether you saw a general practitioner seemingly or a specialist. That was the point. And therefore, there's no distinction that has to be made between these two things. They're clearly different. Clearly, this is 31 and this is 50, but that wasn't the point of the argument. So B is not really relevant. It's not the flaw we were looking for. C, is the argument flawed because it overlooks the possibility that maybe patients are more strongly biased to report favorably on one of these two types of medical professionals than on the other. In other words, maybe people are more biased to give favorable reports about working with a specialist versus the people who work with a general practitioner. Now, here's the thing. This doesn't matter. This doesn't affect anything because the argument was not about the subjective reports of the patients, right? The argument was based on these studies who showed that they received major improvement at the same rate. So the people who saw a general practitioner versus a specialist, they showed the same rate of major improvement. It's not what C is talking about. It's not that they reported that they liked their experience or it's not about their subjective reports. It's that, no, 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 we studied them and it turns out they had the same rate of major improvement. So even if they were more biased to like one of them versus liking the other one, that wouldn't change anything conceivably, right? Uh, also, it looks like it's the same number, meaning it's 31% for both. So why would we be trying to say, well, maybe they're more biased for one than the other? Well, no, because at the end of the day, it was 31% for both. And in the other case, it was 50% for both. So it seems like it was the same number. Why would there be this possibility that one of the groups is more biased? Well, then in that case, why would they have ended up at exactly 50%? In, in other words, why, why did it not matter? Why was it exactly 31% for both and exactly 50% for both? It seems like it's regardless of whether they saw one or the other. So it seems like there wasn't a bias in one direction. So C doesn't really make any sense. It's not the flaw that we expected. It, it's kind of just coming out of nowhere. It wouldn't really change anything for those couple reasons that we mentioned. And therefore, it's not the right answer. There's a better answer. D says the argument's flawed because it doesn't indicate whether, in fact, the number of patients in the survey who saw the general practitioner was the same as the number who saw a specialist. In other words, who says that they're both the same number? Well, the reason that that's not a flaw is because who cares whether it's the same number? The point is that it was the same rate of improvement either way. So if we look at that 31%, if we look at that survey in the first sentence, the people who got short-term treatment, 31% of the general practitioner patients saw major improvement and 31% of the specialist patients saw major improvement. Now that 31% of the general practitioner, that might be 31% of a thousand people. It could be 31% of a million people. It doesn't really matter. And same thing with the 31% of the other group. We don't know what it's 31% of, nor does it matter. It could be that one group was a thousand and the other group was 2000. Either way, the percentage was the same. So who said that they have to be the same exact number of people? Therefore, D is not the flaw of the argument. E says that maybe the argument's flawed because it overlooks the possibility that maybe specialists versus general practitioners, maybe they each tend to excel at treating different types of injuries. Yeah, that's exactly what the flaw is. Because remember, we made this random assumption or the person making this argument that is made this random assumption that, well, since the success rate for general practitioners is the same 
as the success rate for specialists. Therefore, it doesn't matter which one you go to, right? You, you'll get the 31% success rate or the 50% success rate. Whichever one you go to, it's not going to make a difference. But he says, no, 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 hold on a second. You're overlooking the possibility that what if they each tend to excel at treating different types of injuries? And therefore, you can't say that it doesn't matter which one you go to. Maybe if you break an arm, you go to these people versus if you break a leg, you go to those people, right? And maybe that's why they see the same success rate because they're seeing the right people. But maybe if you switch them around, maybe if you broke an arm and you went to see the wrong person of those two people, maybe then you'd only have a 15% success rate, right? So maybe it does matter. In other words, just because at the end of the day, they had the same success rate doesn't mean that all those people who had that success rate with these people could have gone to those that person and seen the same success rate. And it doesn't mean that these people could have gone to that one and seen the same success rate. Maybe they went to the right people. Maybe had you switched them around, they would have seen a different success rate. In other words, maybe there's something uniquely provided by the specialist to the people who saw the specialist that couldn't have been provided by the general practitioner and vice versa. So again, just to reiterate one more time, just because they had the same success rate doesn't mean that they could have just switched. Doesn't mean the conclusion is true right? Just because support doesn't mean conclusion doesn't mean that it doesn't affect your chances. You could just see either one and it doesn't matter. No, maybe there's a reason why these people saw that, that, you know, the specialist, and there's a reason why these people saw the general practitioner. So hopefully that makes sense. E is very clearly the flaw of the argument and just put very simply, very superficially, it really just attacks the conclusion. If you, even if you don't think about this too deeply, it literally just attacks the conclusion. Even if you don't even read the rest of the paragraph, the conclusion says the choice between seeing a specialist or a general practitioner won't affect your chances of major improvement. And he just literally just directly attacks that by saying, well, wait a second. Well, what if specialists and general practitioners each excel at treating a different type of injury, right? That really directly calls into, into question the conclusion by saying, no, maybe they are each good at different things. And maybe it does matter which one you go to. So I think even if you analyze this very simply, very superficially, and just look at the conclusion, it's very clear that E does call that into question. At any rate, E is the right answer. If you found this video useful, don't forget to hit subscribe. And for thousands more clear LSAT explanation videos, go to masterlsat.com.